six. How are electrons and protons similar, and how are they different? Okay. So I gave you a chart of the properties of subatomic particles. So that's the first similarity, right? This I'll just write over here similarities, and then we'll put differences over here. Okay, and we're talking about electrons and protons. So in this case, we don't even care about the neutrons. So I'm only going to highlight the electron one. We're talking about that column with protons. So we don't care about the neutrons for this question. All right, so the first similarity that I see is that both of these are subatomic particles. So that's one bullet, right? They're both subatomic particles. And what does that mean? Well, subatomic particles, subatomic, just means basically um, smaller in size than an actual atom. So sub below, like a submarine, is below the water, right? So sub means below. Subatomic means that it's basically smaller below an atom. So subatomic particles are just particles particles that are smaller than an atom, right, than what you see on the periodic table, right? So these collectively, these subatomic particles collectively will come together, multiple of them, to form the atom. So an atom is consists of these subatomic particles, the electron, the proton, and the neutron. So that's one similarity. They are subatomic particles. Now here, what's another? Um, basically, what? Oop, sorry about that. What is another similarity? Well, I would say that basically the charge of each one of these in coulombs is similar, right? Because they have the same number, but they're just different. Um, charges, right? Remember that electron is always a negatively charged subatomic particle, and the proton is always the positive. So you could think of as proton PP, proton positive, all right? Electron negative, that doesn't really go together, but if you can think of proton positive PP, you'll get the electron correct, all right? Because one has to be positive, the other one has to be negative. So Another similarity that I will put down here is the, you know, I'll say the absolute value. Absolute value of charge is the same, right? The magnitude is the same. It's still a 1.6 times uh, 10 to the negative 19th, 1, 1.602, but the charges are just opposite. So, Let's talk about the differences. There's going to be more differences here. So one specific difference, which I just said before, is that the proton will always carry a plus one charge, it's positive, while the electron will always host a negative one charge. So that's one clear distinction, all right? So a proton is always a plus charge, will always bring positives. The electron will always be negative. Another difference is where they're located. Electrons are always located outside the nucleus, and the protons are always located inside the nucleus. So that's a clear distinction as well. Protons are in nucleus. Meanwhile, the electrons are not allowed in the nucleus. Electrons are always found outside nucleus. So here, if I have a nucleus of, let's just say, let's just put a diagram here. We'll say this is hydrogen. Actually, we will do helium. So we'll do HE. And we don't really care about what the atomic mass is. Usually it's going to be four, and then we'll have a two here. The lower number, just know the lower number, if you ever have to decide between the two numbers, the lower number is always the atomic number. And the atomic number is always the number of protons, so I'll put P here. Now, if the, elect if the element is neutral, 
So I'll just say if neutral, the number of protons will always equal the number of electrons. I'll just put E negative. I will keep doing this because that's usually the symbol for electrons. Electrons are negative. That's why they always say E negative. So in this case for helium, that means that I have two protons and I'm not saying that this one is charged, so technically I have two electrons as well. So if I had to draw helium, I will draw a circle, and let's just box it in here, or circle it in, right? This is helium, and let's just say that this is the nucleus of helium, right? So you should have two positives, two protons. So I'll just say one positive here, one positive here. Now, where does the electrons reside? They reside in a ring around the nucleus. So they kind of are like the, the garters of the nucleus, right? So helium will have two electrons. So maybe one is here and one is here. We don't really care where they're located, but just know that there's two around the nucleus. So you'll always represent a nucleus as like a circle and then... Um, the rings around the nucleus will be where the electrons are. So that's what that is. So two electrons here, and we'll say two protons here. Okay, so that's what it means by protons are always inside the nucleus, electrons are always outside the nucleus. So that gives this a check. We talked about the charges, the unit charges, one is a plus one, one is a negative one. And if we look here at the mass, they have completely different masses. As you can see, electrons weigh way less than a proton. And you can see it here as well. So that's the other difference that I will put. A proton has much more mass than an electron. And they usually like to give that question on a test, right? They'll say, where is most of the mass located in an element? It's located in the nucleus, because in the nucleus you have protons and you have neutrons. But that's where all of your mass is coming from, because the protons and the neutrons weigh much more than an electron, all right? So these are your similarities, right? They're both subatomic particles, and they both have an absolute value of the charge in coulombs of the same number. But their differences is that protons are always positive charge, electrons are always negatively charged, plus one and minus one. Protons live inside the nucleus, electrons live outside the nucleus, and protons have a much greater mass than an electron, which is why the nucleus weighs much, much more than the outside, which is called the electron cloud, but that we'll get to later. All right, so this one was easy. If this helped you at all, please click that like button. It just makes, uh, it just keeps us on track as to if we're doing our job right, and we do appreciate that. I thank you for that, all right? Um, if you want to, you can subscribe, but if you don't, that's fine too. We'll still be putting these out, but hopefully you subscribe, all right? But I'll see you guys all in the next question. Have an awesome day. See you later.